A rapid increase in COVID cases has one thing on everyone's mind. Is there another outbreak or is there potentially a problem with the test kits? Let's uncover what's happening here. But before we get started, I'm Dr. Nick Zorowski and I started my holistic health practice in order to help you take control of your health naturally because true health only comes naturally. I also wanna to mention too, I started a brand new community for the Wellness Warriors. If you wanna join the Wellness Warrior community, text this number right here and you're in. Hey, Wellness Warriors, I've heard so many stories from my patients about either themselves or somebody that they know of who has tested positive for COVID-19. And then upon further testing, further analysis, they actually found out they were negative for COVID-19 that I had to dig into it and figure out what is actually happening here. The famous case that brought widespread attention to this matter was Governor Mike DeWine, and he's from Ohio. He tested positive for coronavirus using the COVID rapid test system. After testing positive, he sent his lab results to a laboratory, and he got three negatives after the initial positive. We also learned of NFL teams, both the Jets and the Colts. They had multiple players that tested positive for COVID-19, and what they did is they shut down their training facilities. It was a major upset. They thought they were gonna be quarantining for a while. They sent those tests to a laboratory to be further analyzed and what they found is that they were in fact all negative so they opened up their facilities immediately. Recently a friend of mine had to shut down his whole restaurant because he had a positive COVID-19 test. All of his employees were out of work and then after he got tested multiple more times they all came back negative. What is happening here? And on October 2nd in Nevada, officials issued a statewide directive to nursing homes to stop using the two government issued rapid COVID tests because they were giving a concerning number of false positives that actually couldn't be confirmed by further testing. And now the FDA has actually come out and warned of false results regarding these COVID tests that are being widely used, but still nothing is being done. Now, much of the scrutiny has actually been directed towards the fact that there weren't enough COVID tests in the beginning, but maybe some of it should really be redirected towards the fact that there's a lot of false results coming out of them. There is a newly published finding by a Connecticut pathologist that states that the CDC COVID test kits are giving a 30% false positive result and a 20% false negative. This is by Dr. Sin Hang Lee, reporting a peer reviewed article published in the International Journal of Geriatrics and Rehabilitation. Now the major problem is that an effort to get widespread testing across the whole United States the government had spent hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars on test kits. These tests are known as antigen tests. Now the benefit to them is twofold. The one benefit is that you can get them very cheap. And the other benefit is that you can get a result out of them in like 15 minutes. Now the downfall is that the result that you're getting from it is in many cases not accurate. Someone refer to the PCR test as the gold standard of testing. However, because it has its own fair share of inaccurate results that come from it, many scientists would say there is no gold standard. And the problem with the PCR test is for one, it's very expensive. And two, it takes a long time to get your results back. And the idea is if you actually were infected with COVID-19 and you were around a whole bunch of people waiting for that test result to come back in for seven days, then you would have infected unknowingly many people around you. The Center of Evidence-Based Medicine at Oxford University recently looked at the PCR test to see how that correlates with the presence of an infectious virus in a human or somebody who's positive with COVID-19. Now the results weren't very encouraging. Here's what they had said. These studies provide limited data of variable quality that PCR results per se are unlikely to predict viral culture, as an example, infectious particles from human samples. Insufficient attention may have been paid how PCR results relate to disease. The relationship with infectiousness is unclear and more data on this is needed. And where we're at today is the PCR test is being used to validate other tests like the antigen test, which we just talked about gives a lot of false results and also the antibody test. The big problem with this is it's like grading an exam with an answer key that has a unknown number of mistakes on it. And this has been a problem that has been known for months. Now, Jeffrey Schnipper and Dr. Sachs from Harvard Harvard University had stated this, that statistically mass testing is still good even if it's not accurate. And I quote, even though the test isn't perfect, it's far better than what we're doing now, which is testing 
hardly anyone without symptoms. So the idea is we wanna test everybody all the time so that we can see if somebody secretly has COVID, in part due to concerns about testing accuracy. So they're saying that because people are concerned about the test accuracy, they're just not getting a test at all. Because for most people, the idea is, well, why would I get a test if it's going to give me a false data? Now, the thought process here too is you're better off getting multiple tests in ruling COVID in or out versus not testing at all. Now, something that's kind of funny that happened to me is I was digging through enormous amounts of data to come up with this information. I had this mantra that just kept going through my head and it was my biochemistry teacher from many, many years ago. He would say all the time throughout class, accuracy is key here. And I kept thinking that, and I'm like, accuracy is key here. However, there's nothing accurate about this. The data is flip-flopping. We're not getting accurate results. And there's millions of tests being created and pushed out into the public every single day. There's nothing accurate about it. There's a school local to me that shut down the classroom because one of the children tested positive for COVID-19. They sent all the kids home. Everybody had to quarantine. They were gonna be doing school from home for a period of time. And then upon further analysis, they found that this child was actually negative for COVID-19. I see this happening constantly, and all I can say is how can we move on in society if we're not getting accurate information? We're moving into the flu season, everyone's gonna be coughing and sneezing everywhere, and we need to be able to identify if somebody actually has COVID or they don't. And right now, the system is not doing a good job. There are many serious questions that require real science-based answers. The science and data and how we apply it is what really matters, and having intellectually honest and morally honest conversations across the board is absolutely critical. With all this in mind, it's a good time to focus on boosting your immune system, which when functioning properly is capable of fighting off all kinds of viruses. In order to learn more about that, watch this video right here. Those who were deficient in vitamin D actually were more likely to get influenza and pneumonia versus those who had sufficient levels of vitamin D.